I'll give it just a second here. Get some people coming in. What you got there, Adam? That's my brand new. It's even got dust on the box already. It's because we're building ramps. My brand new SMT10 builder's kit. Ooh. Raw builder's kit. Nice. Mine, mine is sitting right there. It's already together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I uh, just wrapped it last week. So that's good. We'll talk about that one a little bit later. This is my, <laughs> this is the very first SMT10 I, that I ever got. It's probably whatever year that came out. So oh, right. it's like you got clod tires on there. Um, no, it's J concept. Some, uh, some, uh, renegades. Nice. Broke axle shafts every time. <laughs> so uh, what we'll do, we'll kind of go through some intros. So my name is Greg Sopa. I am the kind of resident monster truck guy here with Axial. So uh, with me here, I have Adam Anderson and uh, Ryden's hiding under the bench or something. Uh, he's on his way, so he he should be logged in shortly. So um, we'll go ahead and we'll get started. Uh, but Adam, uh, thanks a lot for, for joining us. Really appreciate it. Um, how's, how's it go? Where, where are you at right now? I'm actually what, what started out, uh, life as maybe like a, just my little hobby garage at home for say full size vehicles. But, uh, now it has been overtaken by my extreme RC collection and there is no longer, I do have one four wheeler in here that I've completely disassembled for the kids, but that's really about it. It's all RC, uh, from, from water to air. I got it all in between. Uh, it's all in here and it is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. You have a couple of projects behind it. What do you have sitting on the bench there? Um, on the bench, the, 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 we're dubbing like the, the mega wave digger, the SMT 10, and we disassembled some, uh, what are not there it is right here and if anybody saw it on our youtube channel on the anderson family uh it floats so good and we we started to go fishing with it but i didn't have uh we we didn't have the right bait so i couldn't catch catch a fishing pond uh ryan has got his uh brand new uh he, he all of his stuff is over here too so he just drops his stuff off and makes a mess and i clean it up uh, and burn my parts and stuff but he's got his uh sex uh He's the three here, the brand new one um, up on the top shelf with another SMT 10. But throughout the shop, when Ryan gets here and he'll give us a little walk around, we actually I don't even know how many SMT 10s I, I do have in my possession. I don't know why I'm addicted to them so badly. Can never have too many monster trucks. Never, <laughs> never. Real ones or or the uh, hobby grade ones. Now, how many trucks do you guys have at the shop there? Uh, monster trucks? Or and, and mega trucks, I guess. And mega trucks. Um, uh, right now, two, four, six. I think we only got at our shop right now. We only have about, I think, eight. I think. Okay. Eight trucks total. Um, well, I forgot. Maybe. Well, uh, maybe eleven. The bro dozer truck. The mud. The mega truck is there still. It's still sitting there. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. So we're kind of housing that for heavy D and those guys. Nice. Nice. Cool. But everything's everything's on in, in quarantine right now from, from mega to monster to everything. We're all on lockdown. Yeah. So do you guys start them up or you know at least get the engines or do you drain all the fluids and stuff? No, or no, no. You you kind of have to, man. If you let those things sit, I mean you you can do that and you'd have to you'd have to rotate the engines over and stuff like that. They hopefully won't sit long enough to necessarily have to do that anyways. But everyone we have battery maintainers on them and things like that to for them to actually sit, you know, but we, we hope they don't have to sit for too many, too many more weeks. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, let's see. Do you want to get into a few questions here? Bring it on. Man. I'm ready. All right. All right. Caleb chase nine. So we, we put on, put a couple questions out on our, our Instagram and Facebook stories over the last couple of days. So we've got a bunch of preloaded ones. And then after we get through those, we'll start working through the, the live comments. So uh, what are your favorite tricks? Let's, let's start with full scale and then we'll, we'll get into RC tricks as well. I, you know what, honestly, this, this is across the board. And for some reason, you know, they are, there are all these awesome tricks we can do 
with the 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 real trucks and, and a backflip is awesome and it's really cool to do it and, and land it but it's almost it's not i can't say it's easy but you can do it it's like it's a setup ramp you can do it but a save man when you do an actual save with a truck with a real truck or or a hobby grade truck that is one of my favorite things of all time even my kid that's four years old we sat outside. Everybody had seen the jump that we did, uh, built the ramp, and he did this jump. He's only four years old, but he had this one video where I kept doing video after video, and he had a save, and he loved it. So that's and it, I by far is my favorite because awesome. A crash is really cool, but if you can save it from from that horrific crash, uh, it's super exciting. I think. Now, it, it seems like more and more nowadays people are doing like the the sidewall saves and things like that. Is that just getting just from practice people kind of figured out it you know, it is right it is man and honestly this year i've tried it so many times to get the truck up there ryan drove my truck one time and he said it was kind of hard to do the two wheel stuff in it the way it's set up it's a little more difficult to balance it compared to what his was and but i've been trying to do it but the one biggest thing i know that is hindering me is that I have a locker in the rear of my truck, mm -hmm. uh, whereas Ryan and like Tyler Meninga and those guys, they have they have spools. My my locker, so it benefits me in racing, so I can be smoother, faster in racing. But then it hurts me for those two wheel skills challenges and things like that. Or if I get in a bad situation, sometimes that locker will unlock um, when I'm the truck is flipping and you try to recover it. So it's kind of hard to weigh it out because I know if, if my truck is set up right that. 90% of the time, you're not going to touch me in racing. I'm going to wear you out. It doesn't matter who you are. Mm -hmm. But but if, uh, if uh, I, you know, I put the spool in at the beginning of the year and it bit me, man, like three or four shows in a row. I just didn't, wasn't smooth. At all. I actually won, but I was like, I just don't like it. I couldn't be smooth. It was reckless. And, uh, but the, for the two-wheel skills side of things or the bicycles or any of those sidewall saves, it's kind of where it's at. Okay. We uh we got an extra guest came in, so we'll we'll bring him in. It's a little little dark, but he's on his way. How you doing, Ryan? Good man, I'm on my way. Yeah, I got my times mixed up. I thought we were gonna do it in an hour, but I'll be there in about ten minutes to weigh in on all this stuff too. All right, sounds good, man. How's the? Uh, did you catch that conversation on the the favorite tricks with Adam? A little bit. I caught the tail end of it. Uh, I know he's talking about the sidewall stuff. You had mentioned it. Uh, so if I was to name a favorite trick, it would be a hard toss up for me. Um, I love the bicycle to moonwalk because it's so complicated. There's so yeah. many variables that go in there and it's, uh, it's, it's in my opinion, probably the hardest move to do right now in monster jam. But, uh, the two wheel stuff is, is awesome. I mean, I love it. It's, uh, the bicycles are a blast, uh, especially when they're, if the track layout is good where you can really ride it that's the best i mean that's you know that's when i have a blast with it because i love to go a long distance with it on two wheels uh and the trucks like to articulate a lot just like the smt10s do uh when you're up on the bicycle so trying to get that thing to set in and stay just right is is not an easy feat either um and then the sidewall donuts are a blast but as far as bicycles and two-wheel skills go the bicycle to moonwalk is is like so hard it's honestly been like beating me up. I've only got one all year. I try it every weekend. Uh, so that is like the hardest two wheel trick because it takes so much timing. And the majority of the time when I miss it, I don't get it. Then I get all antsy and amped up to get it the next time. And I just keep falling on my face. And basically by the time I fail at it a bunch of times, I just say, all right, screw it. I'm not even going to worry about it. And then it kind of just falls in my lap. So it's uh, I don't really even know how to, you know, directly say how to do it neither. There's so many different variables that go into that trick as well, but it would have to be, you know, for my favorite trick would be the bicycle to moonwalk and the probably the favorite favorite would be backflip to moonwalk. So the first time you did the bicycle to moonwalk, was that, was that kind of by accident or you're just like, ah, let's see what it does. It's a, a little bit. It's, it kind of just, it ha it, sometimes it just happens when, you know, I, honestly, the first time I really did it, I think was actually in Syracuse uh, on this crazy freestyle run that I was just going ragged edge, wide open, big, huge drifting turns into, you know, never lifting to the ramp. And uh, I actually clipped a, uh, a, what we call a jammer in Monster Jam. So it's a really short, basically like a skateboard ramp almost. Um, and I 
clipped it, right, like booking it really fast. And the next thing in front of me, while I was borderline getting ready to roll over, was the uh, other trucks, you know. And it was my buddy Steve Sims's Stone Crusher and Brian Wright's Hook truck. So like, definitely didn't want to hit my friend's trucks, you know. So I crammed brakes, and it just I felt it happening when it when I got into that position, the truck, the speed, the angles, all those things. That I don't know how to really explain that I knew what was going to happen. It just everything felt right, and I and, and I knew when I hit the brakes exactly what was going to happen, and it worked out. But it's uh, like I say, it, it happened so easy that time, and it happens super easy other times. But it doesn't. It's not always that easy, you know. It, it's it's super hard to get. There's I think it's basically me and Tyler. I think are the only ones that have gotten it. Okay. Uh, Cody, maybe Cody has. I did one um, in practice. The very first time yeah, I ever right. tried one, I did one in practice, and I've never been able to do one in competition since. Oh, really? I did it one time. Yes, the first time I ever tried it, and everything just fell together just right. But it's practice, so it didn't matter, and I did it right away. I'm like, oh, shoot, this is easy. Never again. <laughs> never again. Have yeah. a sense. That's how it works, man. When it works, it just it's like it's so easy. It's like, how do I not get this every time? Yeah. So, Adam, what's your go-to on, on two-wheel then? My go-to? Um, man, I had the, I was doing that crazy stuff, like doing the double jump backwards and then riding the, like a backwards wheelie basically. But every time I did it, I'd blow a transmission. So I quit doing it, man, because it would bite me. And then going into freestyle, we'd have to change the transmission almost every time. So like I said, this year, kind of like what Ryan said, I, I was just trying for, to get that sidewall to be able to ride the sidewalls around, not necessarily in a, like a cyclone style where it was just out of control, but to be more in control with it. But ever since I took that spool out and have just that locker, I cannot do it. You can, I can feel it in the truck. I can feel that locker unlock and cool. it'll lose power because it'll, what it'll do is as you set it up, it wants to grab almost like you're going to set it up for that, set it up to do like a, a stoppy basically to the moonwalk. You can feel the back of the truck kind of lift and it'll, it, when it goes back to settle down, it's already unlocked the locker. So my outer wheel is, is got all the power and it's kind of messed me up every time, man. I just cannot ride it out. But that, I, that was this year. And I, I, I don't know. The only thing I can do is put a spool in it. That's what I'm going to have to do. Yeah. I got one. The, uh, the, uh, the guys, what they do, your crew chiefs, like in between racing and freestyle, what they can accomplish. It's unbelievable. It is, man. Um, I was trying to think. We just had a pretty intense one. It was actually one of the first arenas I did, and I haven't really broke anything terrible because not that I'm trying to take it easy, but I like in two-wheel, I hate to hurt myself because freestyle, I'm confident in freestyle. That like mm -hmm. if, if I can lay down a run, a full run, that they're not gonna know, they're not gonna get me. You know, I, I'll be okay. I got this. But uh, I went to this arena. My transmission went out, actually, which was in a like a, a a donut competition, which was right before freestyle with only six trucks, and we changed the transmission um, in like fifteen minutes. I think. Wow. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, we. I actually had a motor swap during the show this year. So I was in St. Louis. I can't remember if it was the first show or second show. It was, I actually it was the second show because my body was crashed. Uh, but intros, I come out in intros, and as soon as I come out of the tunnel and make the turn to kick a lap around the stadium, it the oil light comes on, zero oil pressure. Uh, so I do my intro lap, park it, radio to my crew chief telling him what's going on. Um, and so I fired back up, and it was kind of you know, in the heat of the moment. It's, it's hard to make a – a good decision to be honest it's it's you know you want to go with the flow of the show you don't want to mess up the flow of the intro you know because that just kind of sets a bad tone for the week for the night yeah so i uh i fired it back up pulled to my pit stall and by the time i got to the, my pit stall it was starting to vibrate so i told him i was look i'm going to turn around and run to the to the pit area so i luckily i made it into the pit area but as soon as i crested around the turn by the trailer the motor locked up completely and it was totally done but we swapped the motor out in 50, an hour and 15 minutes. We swapped the motor, and I was ready to go again. So it was wow. pretty insane. I come back out to actually win the freestyle, probably the freestyle of the year for me thus far, and uh, it was just insane. It was awesome, and there was so much drive behind it. You know, once once that happens, a lot of people don't realize, like, for us, we, we don't only have to make up for the lost time during that show for the fans, but also our crew guys just worked their self to death just extreme, yeah. like went extreme and we had 
every single crew guy that there is extra whatsoever is back there. If their truck's good up front, they're in the back helping out in a scenario like that. So I, I owed it to those guys to go out there and just burn it down. And that's exactly what I did. It was an amazing time. And it couldn't have been a better, like, cherry on top. It made it all worthwhile. If I would have went out there and just dumped it over, done something stupid like that, it would have been – those guys would have been upset. You know, it just wasn't yeah. worth their time kind of thing, you know. So when that type of scenario happens, you got to go all out. Yeah. Yeah, I was at the first show in St. Louis this year, and, and it was weird because you were the first one going out on freestyle, which is which is kind of funny. Yeah. That usually doesn't happen. <laughs> It was, it was a good show for sure. All right. Uh, Adam. I have a question up here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> have you guys ever jumped over your trucks with an RC truck? Yeah. Do you do long jumps? Oh, uh, so we actually had a jump. I don't know if this is going to echo or not, but I'm here. <laughs> yeah, well, so, there we go. Yeah, I. We both have done it at our Monster Jam, our, our RC World Finals. Yeah, there's a, there's there's footage somewhere. It was part of the competition. A bunch of people did it. We had Dad's Grave Digger in line with this humongous. We actually copied a freestyle uh, motocross jump ramp. Yeah, out of wood, and we were hitting it wide open, jumping over yes, Grave Digger. It was tall. It had yeah. to have been the ramp had to have been at I think least it was twelve foot. Yeah. It was huge. Yeah, it had no problem clearing the truck whatsoever. I mean, oh, it was by a long yeah. shot. And you couldn't see where it landed, and normally it wasn't good. <laughs> just got a cartwheel wherever it wanted to go. Uh, some people went in the windows. Yeah. People, if their yeah. truck or whatever, whatever they were jumping with didn't have enough to kind of make it up the ramp, or if they kind of ran off of it, I they ran right into the side of the truck. It went like in the side window and stuff. <laughs> nice, nice. All right, let's see what other questions we have going on. Growing up, what was the stupidest thing you convinced each other of, to do on four wheels? So many things. <laughs> oh, the one that instantly pops in my mind, which it wasn't even Adam making me do it, was uh, when we were younger, we all had, you know, we had ATVs uh, all the time. We grew up on quite a bit of property. And when dad would be gone, dad's always had equipment and things like that. So we would build tracks and the way we would build tracks, I would never drive it was dangerous. Yeah. I would never ride on those tracks today, but either way we were doing it back then and Adam was building a jump and we didn't, we were running out of dirt to, for our track. So we wanted to get big air, but we didn't have a lot of dirt and we weren't really up to the doubles at this time uh, in our riding careers. So we were doing tabletops, but we really, we made them really short and really steep. So we were trying to get a lot of height, drop back down on the landing ramp, land perfectly, and go on. Well, Adam was building the ramp with uh, Dad's bulldozer, and he pulled off to the side, which I thought was a sign for me to take off and try it. it. was not. I don't know what he was doing, but either way, I hit it, and the ramp was all messed up for whatever reason I didn't notice, and it actually launches me nose down 90 degrees, landing from a pretty good height, and it knocks me out. I'm rolling underneath of the four-wheeler as it's kind of just – it rolled him like oh. it wadded him up. Like he kept rolling under it and it was just riding over him <laughs> at the same time he's rolling under it. And I'm like, Oh my God. I, I was probably, I don't know, maybe like 12, maybe 13 at the time. Yeah, maybe. And uh, we had a station wagon that we used to do burnouts with yeah. around the property. And I, he had two flat tires on the back from doing burnouts. So oh, I wow. ran to the house, grabbed that. And that was the ambulance come yeah. back and got me, hold me back. And of course my mom, she's a, uh, She's dealt with it her whole life, but she still doesn't deal with it that great when it's us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, let's see. What about sports cars? What are your favorite sports cars? Man, I, I, um, I'd love those CTSVs. I really do. I don't know why. I mean, like – we, we, Ryan got one as a rental a couple of years ago. I had one one time too. And man, unreal, unbelievable. I, but I haven't really been in a bunch of other cars, I, but those things, it's kind of like a little bit of a mix of uh, uh, American muscle, but it's super sporty too. An ungodly amount of power. Unreal. Mm -hmm. I, those things were a blast. Right. For me, I don't, I, I like the CTSV is awesome just because anything V8 supercharged is just awesome. Uh, but I have drove a Ferrari before and that was ridiculous. 
Um, but one thing that, and I think it was mostly just because it caught me by surprise so much, was a Tesla uh, S model, I think it was. Really? Yeah, I could not believe how fast it was and the amount of control and adjustments and things that was just, you know, yeah, it's an electric car and, you know, a lot of people have different feelings about that, but strictly as far as the performance point of view, that thing, it blew my mind. I could not believe the torque, the power, that traction traction control was so precise on the thing. It was just insane. And the fact that you could turn it all the way off and just John force that thing <laughs> was the ultimate. Nice, nice. All right, Grave seven two nine one. Do you guys own any RCs? If so, what's your favorite of all time? I need to fire the phone back up for this. Yeah. This is a, we have a issue. So, uh, uh, you give us the tour around the shop. Well, this is just some of them. We have some in another shed too. Ryan, back on here. He goes, flip it around, and it's embarrassing, kinda when you really look at it as a whole. This is just some of them. A majority of the stuff, I don't know. We, we just love the this solid axle stuff, though. I don't know why. I, I can't say I don't know why. It's because of the realism of them, I guess. But um, one of my favorites is the is it that that right there? That's probably one of my favorites. Uh, of okay, all. And glorious. Yeah, I love it, man. It, it just takes a beat and it keeps going. But the planes, we had a blast with the plane. We love those. It's ridiculous, man. The, the majority of the stuff is the SMT10 stuff, um, and we just did. Is that a son of a digger SMT10? Do what? Is that a son of a digger SMT10 down there? That one is, yeah. That we oh. did that for, uh, for uh, Ryan's boy's uh, Christmas present. I told Ryan, like, man, we need it. He had the body. He had this body sitting in his house. I'm like, dude, let's do it, man. Let's just build. <laughs> it. And uh, I finally started putting it all together and painting the chassis and all that stuff and we're stu super super deep into it and it was uh but the smt 10 is honestly man has been our favorites like we have a lot of the bashers and uh, any of the buggies all that stuff i don't know why we just we were addicted to these things i guess it's just like what we really do i, I don't know and we've honestly i can feel like we can drive these things and we you could do something with these and you realize well maybe i could do that in the real truck too so when it comes to oh hang on let me there we go. So when it comes to the SMT10 versus your your real truck, I mean what what is the driving experience? What things are similar versus you know what what things are totally different? I think that uh, to me that's that our massive attraction to the SMT10 is the realistic behaviors. It actually does do things that the monster trucks do and some more. Uh, the biggest variance it has to be the uh, weight to power ratio. I would love for the monster <laughs> trucks to be that nasty. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, our axles are already about $40,000 a piece. So I couldn't imagine making it hold triple the power. Yeah, it wouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the, that's the main thing is obviously the horsepower. But there's, there is, like Adam's saying, there's so many things that are real about the truck, the way they react and suspension tuning and things like that. And, like, you know, going on, uh, putting the, uh, the, the trailing arm and leading arm setups on them, it, it was, it's pretty similar to what a real monster truck would kind of do. It's, it's it does. It's so much more travel. It's a huge effect. Just the tunability you have with them and all, all the different things you can change, uh, whether it's the factory stuff or aftermarket parts, it's just un, unreal the amount of stuff that you can do with them. So, um, I, it's gotta be the attraction to them, you know, and there's certain setups like, you know, we'll do on one and you're like, man, that thing is awesome. And then you spend four times the amount of money on this next one. And then that one sucks compared to that <laughs> cheap one. Yeah. But you guys are on brushless at all of them, man. Every one all of them. them, every one of them. We and always talk about it when we first get them, we're like, God, oh, we'll just run this for a little bit. No, <laughs> for like maybe a battery pack and we go brushless on them. Uh, we, but honestly, we've gotten to the point now when we get ready to break into one, we don't really even do it until we have the, you know, all the parts necessary yeah. basically to do it. So, we, you know, we'll get the tire combo, tire and wheel combo we want, shock combos, Man. engine combos, all those different things. I should show my we'll, parts drawers. Yeah. Adam has a, uh, basically a hobby shop behind this counter here. So <laughs> we, we basically lay out our build before we even break yeah. into it because we know it's just going to, 
you know, we know what's going to happen when we start driving it the way we do. You start escalating. You add one thing, got to add another, add another. We know what it takes to from start to finish for the build. So now, and, and honestly, if like if we drove the trucks, if we didn't hit jumps that are six times the normal size with them, that we build them tough enough now that they honestly like my youngest son i built his the simplest but i put some of the best parts like some of the steering servos i put some of the most expensive steering servos i've ever had in my life on anything on these things but they don't break after that you're you're good yeah. and then yeah. um one thing that's pretty funny is we we've built a a, a scale two scale uh monster jam arena pod uh and it actually has the tires we use the stock tires off the smt 10 and one side we stacked pvc pipe uh, to simulate the log stack that we do in Monster Jam and uh, has little lips here and there so we can do like little stoppies and moonwalks, which are probably the hardest thing to do. But it was hilarious to me that it actually was, it, we, we incurred the same damage problems we did with Monster Jam almost exactly on that track. So, yeah, when, exactly. we, when we brought that track to, to the real world of Monster Jam, it started tearing up four link bars really bad, suspension issues. Uh, housings are were just blowing out of everything because it was a lot of up and down and landing pogoing the truck, yeah. which is yeah. more or less not using the suspension. And the ramp worked so perfectly that it was doing the same thing to these trucks. So we were running plastic links to have some give, some forgiveness, yeah. but it was actually just U shaping the things. And then we yeah. up to a, a different arm and we were breaking the himes and everything like that, like that. So we basically went through the same thing we did with the real monster trucks to make them handle that pogoing action like the arena shows have uh, with the SMT tens on our little track. And it was pretty, pretty funny, even though you were like, Oh man, you broke another one. You got to go yeah. back and change it. The kids love it when, oh, they, yeah. when they like, and I'm out here and I'm like, I'm about to just lose my stuff, man. I can't like, I just, I tell them sometimes I'll yell. I'm like, I want to play with mine one freaking time. That's it. Yeah. Adam's got it rough because he's got two boys and they both. And what they'll like, do and they'll start from whatever it is. You know, we've, we've got them all the way from the, the granites. They love their grant. They, those have been some of the toughest ones by far. They'll do the granites. And I, honestly, they'll just, when the batteries die on them, then they'll go to this, this, this. And with, if something happens on one, it's the next one, the next one, the next one. And I'm just finally, I tell that's what all those trucks are lined up over there. They got, I got it to now where my little boy, he'll make me a list. I'm like, all right, make me a list on what's hey, broken on it. I can order it and I'll fix them. It's a mess, man. Yeah, he's got it bad because with his two boys running, they're out there tearing stuff. And when and when all three boys race, Wade and Luke are all together, my boy and his two, they like, of course, they're feeding off each other. They're competing with each other. They're racing. They're and they get so tied up when they're drag racing, they'll run into stuff and they're just you know don't even care. Well, then they come. They're coming back in with everything just wadded up. And Adam's got two trucks to handle. I've only got one, so I get a little bit of play time. During yeah. the day, where Adam, if it's RC time, Adam's just RC RC here. Here. This is my bench. I got yeah. this. That is that sucker's <laughs> back to back batteries on the, the Milwaukee there. All right, so, speaking of jumps, you guys had a, uh, you've been working on one recently. So, I want to chat through it quick. Let me switch my screen over here so I can play. Yeah, Ryan hasn't even, have you, did you see it today? Yeah. He has, well, so. We got a whole video going down where we built it, and we, <laughs> Ryan did a lot of the on hands-on work with that Joker. And when we really had to stretch the plywood to flex it, <laughs> uh, we worked together. Um, but we, dude, I swear we have like almost ten hours in that jump. It yeah, seems for like. sure. Yeah, which we were we were far from carpenters either. You know, that's yeah. that's that's probably at least six hours of the problem. <laughs> so with that, are you guys? So you just took thin plywood and you kind of got it wet and stretched it, or uh, it's actually a little thicker plywood than we I, probably we, should have used. Yeah, we used salt treated because the last ones we built the arena pot. So we're going to build a new track, and we just haven't done it yet. We're going to basically do the stadium version of it, and I think it. I would swear we have a sawhorse that is heaped up with two by sixes, two by fours, and we got to get some more plywood. But uh, it, the last one rotted because it was no salt treated wood, and we left it out. We didn't take care of it. Okay. And uh, this one we want to be able to leave outside, so it's all salt treated uh, wood, and so we can leave it outside all the time or, or move it wherever we have to. Um, but we actually, what we did is we scored the wood. I think it's like three. Is, was it three quarter or half inch? Half inch yeah. plywood, maybe half inch plywood. Yeah, half inch okay. uh, salt treated plywood. And I just set the depth shallow on my skill saw and scored it over. I'm talking about like every inch or two inches for almost the entire length of it. Um, oh. so, so it would flex and we didn't know if it was going to break or it was pretty wet. You know how salt treated plywood's like super wet. 
So yeah. salt treated wood in general, but anyways, it uh it actually it went together so nice, it was pretty cool. Yeah, that that is a, a pretty sweet jump. I mean, I I think pretty much anybody with an RC car, whether it's solid axle monster truck or not, would would have some fun with that one. So that's that's pretty sweet. I've been looking forward to that. So this one, if anyone wants to see it, it's on uh, Adam's Instagram. So um, yeah, I'm, I've got a YouTube video that we're getting ready to complete. Once it's final, the final paint gets done, we're going to complete the YouTube video and it kind of shows how we built it and everything like that. And we actually struggled for like, we gave up three days in a row yeah, because I was dead set on making sure the tune of the jump, the step up. So basically hitting it opposite of the way that RC is hitting it now, yeah. the step up tune had to be perfect and we got it to work, but it just was not exactly the way it, I was picturing it. So yeah, we, we like seriously got so mad. We gave up multiple times. I had to give it the night to, to calm down. We come back in. We finally nailed take it, it apart. Put oh. it back together. Take yeah. it apart. Put it together to but, make it right. It's right. so perfect now. I mean, you hit it dead on. And it, even a slower truck can make it. Uh, that's and that's basically what we did. We we took one of our slowest trucks to tune it in with, so then all of our faster trucks would definitely make it. Okay, nice. So here's the. Uh, your YouTube channel. So it's the Anderson. So the actual username is son of a digger, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I'm in the process of trying to figure out what to call it. So I, I to be honest with you, I was dead set on Anderson's. Um, <laughs> until we realized that there's thousands of Anderson's. Or yeah. Yeah. Anderson's. Well, there were so many YouTube channels that were titled the Anderson's the, and, you know, different uh, abbreviations and this and that that were basically popped up a, a ton of channels that way. So I'm trying to decide on a name, trying to been get, uh, getting some help from fans. On what to call it. It's going to be maybe like maybe the digger family or something like that. We're not sure yet, but more or less, it's going to be uh, what I'm trying to aim to get at is uh, just going to let everybody in the every day to day life of what we do, which is really ridiculous. Like, I'm not going to lie. I still have uh, antifreeze on my hands because I just jumped a crown Vic in the field and blew the radiator out of it. Did you really? <laughs> yeah. I, think I was supposed to save it till Saturday, but I blew the radiator out. Yeah, yeah. For Weston's uh, 18th birthday, you guys were doing that? Yeah, we're trying. So actually, I was out there tuning the jump. I built a, I wanted to build a tabletop, but I didn't quite have enough dirt to build the tabletop just right. You know, and I definitely don't want it to be really short. It's got to look cool, you know, so it's got to have little heights to it. So I basically did a belly, like almost a double with a little bit of dirt between. Well, I, I still didn't have a ton of dirt and I was trying not to make it crazy because we have a couple small cars too. Um, but either way, the test session did not go as planned with Crown Vic. I overjumped it a little bit, which I, I, I didn't just jump it once. I jumped it like 10 times. But <laughs> it, uh, it, it eventually broke the radiator, and we're going to try to rig up another radiator in it. But either way, yeah, that's uh, – that's but that's normal. I mean, really, like this Saturday, last Saturday or Sunday, Weston decided he wanted a, a, a beater car race between us, the family members, for his 18th birthday because you can't really do much else right now. Yeah. So yeah. that time period between, you know, uh, four or five days ago and now we've accumulated almost 11, I, I think it's 10 or 11 cars that are runners. Most of them don't have brakes. So that's quite the scenario we're trying to figure out. But you had like a lever that you made for the shifter, didn't you, on the car? Yeah, mine, so mine was a little suspect. It had the column busted out of it, uh, no title. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, was locked with um what, what was in there a set of bolt cutters that was that the bolt cutters were broken uh but either way uh yeah the shifter was messed up with the column so i had to rig up a new shifter left-handed style it's a, it's a little atrocious on the uh fabrication side of things but it's super hilarious so that's how i make up for the bad fabrication because it's funny nice nice and you're uh so you're gonna have on your instagram i i assume you'll have that on your stories because your your instagram is that son of a digger right yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll post somewhat of it on the uh, that my Instagram story. I'll keep it semi updated, but the true video is going to come out through my YouTube channel. Um, I'm working on getting some superstar guest uh, hosts that are going to be there live. So right. uh, all that stuff will be decided fully, but it's going to be hilarious. Right. <laughs> I'm hopefully we'll have my ride ready. I'm only, I haven't even posted it. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. I'm not telling yeah. anybody. His is ridiculous. Top speaker, you're just going to show up ready well, to go. My, my original plan was I honestly I tried to acquire a limousine 
and I was going to come in like dumb and dumber style. And like I was going to come with, I wasn't going to tell anybody, like I wasn't going to tell them. And just as they're hanging out, I'm like, no, I'm not going to make it. And I'm going to come flying in with this limo and I'm going to like bring donuts and stuff in the field. And then I'm going to climb out the back door. <laughs> and, but after I, after I drive it and try to make it through, but I couldn't, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't find one in the price range that I needed to basically be able to run into a tree and then leave it. So, um, but I acquired something else that's about triple the size of a uh, limousine, and I hope to have it uh, oh. going tomorrow. So, there you go. I yeah, found a picture of our of our arena pod when we first did when the it was arena brand new. God, it was so good. I want to share it with everybody just because it was so perfect, it man. Was. Paint, that's honestly what inspired us to do uh, the step up jump is because the arena pod that we built really is like a massive like part in, in our family yeah. really i'm not gonna lie like it brings everybody together like when one person gets on the arena pod with the rcs everybody gets in on it yeah. i mean it brings my my dad comes over and races rcs and he gets so aggravated because the kids are better than him <laughs> he gets so mad he only wants to do drag racing because that's like the yeah. only thing he can maybe <laughs> that's because he red lights most of the time but <laughs> it's it, it really that thing is is a huge piece of our fun times together it's a big part of our memories so yeah. and when i seen a picture of it just how perfect it was when we first built it and since it's rotted just because we didn't use the right wood and things like that we didn't take care yeah, of it really I, I my carpenter skills were like out of a scale of one to ten there may be a six now and they were like a three then so there's a lot of filler gaps with styrofoam and things like that. <laughs> that it looked uh, fresh oh it looked though. awesome yeah from like yeah, 10 looked good. i remember when he guys posted that originally it, it looked awesome yeah but uh, uh, Speaking that, of RCs, we had many, many, many people ask this question. When is Axial going to make a son of a digger SMT 10? So, I mean, there's there's one right on the other side of the garage from you guys. That's so. a custom one. That's a custom one. <laughs> and that, I, like, every time I post that one, everybody's like down me. Like, what's up? Is, when can we get that? Where can yeah. we get that? So yeah, it's like, it looks, and that, thing is just like, that thing's just like the arena pod. It looks so good. <sighs> Yeah. When it was brand new, it's because it's, it's paint. There's now. nothing you could do. Um, yeah. you know, I know a lot of people go in there and you can dye the chassis and you can just do it black. That's really about it. But you can't. Yeah. It, that, if anybody that tries to do anything else, I mean, if you want to do a purple on accident, you can because I've done that. <laughs> but uh, oh, but uh, yeah. that one was like so fresh. But you just got to leave the body on it now because the the green the the gray digger heart starting to show. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, there it is. You can send that to him. So yeah, I'm gonna it send it to you real quick, Greg, because this thing is just beautiful. Yeah, right. oh, I might have man. to email it to him. Oh, okay. Yeah, if you email it to me, I should be able to bring it up. I think. Okay, I actually got a little video thing that I was. Oh yeah, what well, you did that? They posted that a long time ago, I think. Yeah, yeah, it's on my Instagram way back in the back. But uh. Oh man, it's it's, it's loading. I'll get it sent to you so you can see it and watch the okay. video possibly. All right. But, so RC Empire HQ, would anyone run an independent suspension truck from a tech and fun this point of view? Why not? Limited I, air. Yeah, no, no. I, I definitely we would, and we talked about it a long time ago. Uh when when some of the, the first independent suspension RC monster trucks started coming out and we saw how they worked, we're like, man, they're why wouldn't we do this? But then you kind of figure out why um, to scale speed is probably 300 miles per hour and probably 10,000 horsepower, if not more. Um, and, and for size, just for actually uh, hauling it up and down the road, there is a guy that built one um, and, and hats off. I mean, he had some ingenuity in it and, and it kind of works and stuff, but honestly, it's like, it works so good that this is not even, even if he had one of the, the baddest motors you have right now, I don't think that it would do, it wouldn't react the way that even these, like, just like Ryan said, this is, that's why we keep coming back to these. And yeah. because we got some of these basher trucks, man, that you can just jump over my house with and it's fine. <laughs> or, you know, you got these things that you, you go around a turn and it flops over, you know, yeah. it's like, but that's why you kind of love it. You can't get away. Yeah, from realism, it. Yeah. There's yeah. some guys that race RC monster trucks and they despise a solid axle truck. And I'm like, forget you dudes. <laughs> forget <laughs> you guys. I love them. I can't help it. You know, I just cannot get away from it. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. I mean, as an RC, just how they handle, I mean, you know, you take the, the crate and like you said, you can launch it. 40, in the air, 
it can land on the roof and it's still fine. But I mean, just the handling on those is great. But there's yeah. a lot of axle trucks that just, I mean, I I kind of dabble a little bit of everything, but I always kind of come back. Like you see, I kind of got a few of the solid axle trucks yeah. behind in there. And they're just, I always kind of go back to them. They're, they're fun. They're fun for the bench too. I, yeah, yeah, I know it. It is. There's some of the best ones. It's like, I, I don't know. It's just, it's hard to, I, I cannot get away from it. Like, I, you know, I, I, I love the, uh, the outcast and all that stuff. And I have so much fun with those, but it's like, honestly, I take those out when I'm like done messing with these for a little bit. I'm like, all right, I'm going to go bash the heck out of something for a little bit and yeah. park it and then be done. You yeah. know, and it's hanging up again. It's ready to go. Next time yeah. the battery's charged up, I'll just play with it again. Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, can you make Daniel Buchanan? Can you make an RC grave digger that is like the very first grave digger? So, do you guys have one that's? Uh, let me see. Yeah, there's one see. right here. But, uh, what, I just got the body. You gotta. Well, I mean, there is that one right there. Yeah, I got that thing. So that's. I mean, it's. It all depends because there's like a. You know, there's a grave digger that was a mud truck. That was mm -hmm. the you know first truck ever called grave digger, but it wasn't necessarily a monster truck. Which this was the second grave digger but it was just a mud truck there was never terror tires on the legend um it looked basically just like this smt 10 with a customized j concepts uh ford panel truck uh fling kings and all that cool stuff so it looks like the real deal but the very first truck grave digger monster truck was what we call grandma which a lot of people don't know totally that was actually this same truck that was the, the legend, which was blue and gray. And the only reason this thing was blue and gray back in the day is because the farm that my dad worked at, every vehicle they had was blue and gray. So he could scalp the paint and those guys painted it up for him, just, you know, throwing it in like another one of their paint jobs yeah. on their farm trucks. So that's why it was blue and gray because it was free. And then um, once he kind of got some popularity going and started getting hired to crush cars more, he said, man, I got to get a name. I got to get a paint job that matches the name. Yeah. So this is, so this is grandma. basically how it went right here. Yeah. This is that. I don't have them on the trucks right there. So you got the original mud truck. It's actually right. got, it's got mud all over it. Yeah. <laughs> then the legend and then grandma. And like I was saying is these two trucks were actually the exact same trucks, the legend and grandma, they were the same ones. And it's, and the grandma truck is still sitting at, my dad at the dad my dad's shop at diggers dungeon and that was yeah. what originally was the the grave digger the legend that most people know as blue and gray got repainted for the first first spooky paint job and it is the rig, original spooky paint job on grandma still today still living rusting in peace in our front yard <laughs> now you have the the mud truck there as well parked out in front how many of the digger trucks do you have at the dungeon there uh, so we have full time there. We have the uh, Grave Digger Mud Truck, the, the uh, Red Primer Truck, uh, which is it's a remake. It's not the original one because mm -hmm. at that time, dad didn't have the money to just save it as a novelty piece. He parted it out to use parts for his new truck, parts for you know other stuff to sell stuff, all those different things. So he doesn't have the original. But we rebuilt that truck, the, the original mud truck, the uh, Red Primer one identical to the way that he did it back in the day. He wouldn't let us use all of our fancy new tools and things like that, like maybe the welders. But other than that, he wanted us to be torching stuff. We had to get the exact tire and wheel combo because that truck actually had different tires front and rear. And it was strictly out of necessity for dad back then because, because it was what he could get for free or basically next to nothing. But now we had to search it down and find that exact tire off a certain combine of this year for the back and a certain combine of this year in the front and that those rims were different as well and those rims dad had to cut in a certain spot to get the offset just right and it was different from front to back and he can barely remember mine and adam's kristen wesson's birthday but he remembered the exact measurement yes yeah. to pull to get that offset just right the seats were out of a certain year some astro van thing the motor was out of a certain year Corvette, all these things. He remembered every bit of it. And one of the biggest, craziest things, if you're any type of gearhead at all, it had a 327 out of a Corvette with a turbo 350 two wheel drive to with a homemade coupler to a granny low four speed with the bell housing removed with a 205 and 
I think, or no, a, a, a two hundred. A Dana two hundred, yeah. yeah. So basically, he had two transmissions back to back, and then a transfer case, and then a transfer case, yeah. So he had all those selections, bam, 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 ch -ch 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 and it was not only his way of capitalizing on not having any power and huge tires, but he also no power. <laughs> at, at, uh, at some certain mud races, and it still happens today, there's different tire size classes. So that was his way of gearing the truck for a different size tire. He had like a 40-inch tire he would put on it to run the 40-inch okay. tire class and then the tractor tire class and all those things. And he had all the gear selections he needed, which he actually carried on that ingenuity into the grandma, uh, the legendary grandma truck. And uh, I don't remember the exact combination of that because it was some uh, like rocket science going on in that thing that was homemade couplers all this crazy stuff but i do know it had 23 gear selections in ford and reverse the truck would go just as fast backwards as it would ford and it was honestly in a drag race with no finish line it would probably top speed better than our real monster trucks now just wow. because it's a little longer getting there oh yeah it, would, it was there it, our motors would probably be blown up and cooled off by the time he passed us but it'd be going like 120. <laughs> <laughs> nice all right, here's here's one for you. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's do this one. Who do in a race between the two of you at Chicago style racing? And we'll we'll watch the comments here. We'll we'll let people comment there if they want to comment their their own opinion on it. It's hard to say. I'm I'm honestly I, I feel like I can if I can get at them, like if I can lay down a really smoking awesome pass, I'm Mike could get at him. Maybe he's the big, my biggest competitor for sure, as far as racing goes, but 90% of the time, I'm not going to lay down a good pass because because the, the pass that I have to lay down against him to beat him is me super hail marrying it and really throwing it all to the wind. So I'm I have counting to, I have on love everything. I have to do that when I race him now too, because most of the time I can just be Mr. Consistent and I can just roll around that track and have a nice clean pass. And it's fast. I normally have always really have fast times. Um, but if he did that Hail Mary against me, then he, he's going to run me down. So I have to do the same thing. So we kind of go back and forth. Now, the first couple of years that we were racing each other, I don't think he got me. And then, uh, and then finally this past year, last year, the end of last year, he got me like four in a row or something like that. Yeah, I ended his streak, which he actually ended my streak. Yeah. So we we both have, uh, we're either tied or I think he might have, he, he beat me on the, like the most consecutive races ever won back to back to back to back. And uh, I can't remember what the number even is, but it was pretty substantial. And he ended my streak. Yeah. And like I was super bummed because it was crazy. Like it was just going, going, going. But if anybody's going to take it from me, I want it to be him. And then yeah. the same thing happened the other way. He was on a crazy streak past me by I think maybe a race, you know, like a, a full then, win. Yeah. And then we were together, and I ended his streak. But with that though, we always have this thing. That was it kind of just naturally like it was like unspoken agreement that we we you know everybody knows now basically if i beat him it is my duty to, to win go all. on and win the whole show same with him if he beats I, me it's his duty to go on and finish that finish it out and beat everybody i kind of felt the same way when i first started driving because when i would race dad and uh if i beat him and i would like secretly inside of me i'm like oh crap i just beat dad this is this sucks <laughs> You know, I feel bad now. He's just sitting there, you know, and I got to win the whole dang thing, you know, and we would never say that, but almost every time I would do that. But also it's like, you're taking out your toughest competitor. So your confidence is there then too. And, yeah. uh, and a lot of times I feel like a lot of the other competitors, when they get up against us, most of them, they kind of, they, they, they psych themselves out. You, if you just make a nice smooth pass that they're, they're going to, they're more scared of losing or they're more, they want to win so bad that they psych themselves out. So, and whereas I'm in there, I've been driving for 15, 16 years now. So I'm just like, this. <laughs> <laughs> no, so do you know, head to head, do you guys keep track of uh, who's got the upper hand on racing? I am. He does. I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm not hundred percent sure, but it's there's definitely, there's definitely uh stats on that. I, yeah. We're terrible with remembering that kind of stuff. Like we should be all about that and rem remember all of our stats, but I don't, we don't. There's guy, there's, we got people for that. Yeah, we We just have fun. We, we have yeah. so much fun, and we're too tied up in making sure that we're having a good time that we yeah. kind of not. We don't ignore that stuff, but we don't really get into it. Yeah, you know, too much. It's cool. It's like yeah, it's you know, I'm proud of that. But at the same time, if you get a lot so of times that messes me up. Like if the guy comes up, be like. 
you know, whether you, he'd be like, man, if you win this race tonight, this is going to be your 100, 100 stadium racing win. And I'm like, well, dang, I didn't know that. Why'd you tell me that? Because <laughs> I think about it and I want to win to make those yeah. stats, you know, so that makes yeah. it tough. Nice. All right. Julie Barkley uh, said, my seven-year-old son, Cody, wants to know which generation gravedigger is your favorite? Um, I kind of, honestly, because I drove the, the blue and silver truck, I love that truck because of that. You know, I really do. And I, I, I love it as the original truck, more so even at, than as the, the modern day truck that I drove. It was just, it was really cool. It was just one of the, the stepping stones of what it is today. It's that between that and probably gravedigger number two which is the first Chevrolet because that was uh that was the truck that was ba basically made what Gravedigger is today. I think from TV from the TV side of things watched monster trucks in the in the late early late uh 80s early 90s that 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 was the truck for sure that everybody Yeah, okay. I that's it's it's such a there's so many things and and we know behind the scenes all the reasons why that truck was so important and there's really not one that wasn't they all were um i we were i was just actually in my house with a couple of my buddies watching some four-wheel jamboree videos from back in the like late 80s early 90s and man we we're like dude we i want to build a, a a retro monster truck just to crush cars out in the field just for fun yeah, yeah. we actually yeah. we parked our square bodies out in my yard like all lined up like we're at a four-wheel jamboree <laughs> but my favorite, the one that pops in my head instantly all the time is it was is Gravedigger number seven. And when dad restored Gravedigger number seven, basically brought it back to competition level, um, he just got done building Gravedigger number 12. And Gravedigger number 12 was a super long wheelbase. It was built for kind of the Pender series style racing, but it kind of came in right at the end of that kind of stuff. So um, it, it was, it worked good, but it also worked kind of too good. So for freestyle purposes, it was tame. The wheelbase was so long, way longer than what we have today, that it, it kind of sucked up a lot of stuff that it shouldn't have, or it just wasn't very exciting. Mm. Um, and that's what we grew up on. That's what Gravedigger is, you know, our foundation, everything of Gravedigger is about being crazy. So a Gravedigger truck that's not crazy is not good for us. So he went back old school, took Gravedigger number seven, restored it, remodeled it, uh, upgraded the suspension and things on it, but kept the very short wheelbase that Gravedigger 7 was so famous for. Uh, and with the updated horsepower, the updated suspension, and all those things, and also Dad's updated budget at that point, uh, brought a whole new level of excitement. So this thing would straight up power wheelie like a brushless SMT-10. Yeah. I mean, if you didn't let out, it would just dump it over. It was insane. Uh, the, the had flames on the top of it, which were only cool because that truck was basically at 90 degrees at yeah. all times. It didn't race worth a crap. It was terrible at that. And to be honest with you, it was kind of terrible at jumping too, as far as a mechanical standpoint, because it would jump nose high, yeah. crazy out of control, but it was absolutely the most insane thing. It was 100% out of control the whole time. Nice. So that's, that's my favorite grave digger just because of that reason. Like I would, I would die to get a chance to get behind be the fun. wheel of that thing. It would it's, be fun. Honestly, the whole time you would be just trying to drive it, and from the outside it would be a crash the entire yeah. time. I can't say that I wouldn't want, that I would want to drive one of these original Leaf Spring trucks <laughs> over that one. I don't think. I don't know. I mean, it would be fun to just crush some cars in the yard, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Not to not just annihilate a pile of cars. <laughs> <laughs> That's my bucket list, though. Talking about that, you know, hitting a hitting a stack of cars with a Leaf Spring style monster truck, like the OG real deal. Yeah. But most importantly is you cannot do it without hanging out of the window. Uh, if you're not hanging out of the window, that doesn't count. You might as well not even. <laughs> <laughs> nice. How many of the grave diggers have leaf springs on them? Two of them. Two of them? Uh, okay. Yeah. Grave digger, uh, well, so the legend slash grandma it, uh, yeah. and grave digger number two uh, and grave digger, uh, grave digger number well, grandma is, and we actually was talking, we were talking about this yesterday with dad talking about, you know, the possibility of just throwing together a junker retro monster truck just to play with. And he said, you need to go out there and measure grandma. And he knew, of course, just like his other memories, doesn't remember anything else, but he remembers the year model and make of the leaf springs that were on this thing. And it was a certain type of leaf spring that was, was that of a offset. Yeah. In front of a school bus yeah. it was offset and all these things. Slider but, deal. Yeah. But it, yeah, yeah. that he said the grave digger number one 
handled and landed so much better than number two. Than Graveyard number two. And Graveyard number two was really short. Like it was uh, his race truck. Yeah, it was it was okay. the bad boy, but it handled like crap as far <laughs> as it was just really rough riding, really stiff. And the old grandma here, which was you know twenty thousand pounds, probably probably still with no motor in it right now in the yard, it's probably pushing eighteen. But it's, he said it was the best ride. <laughs> nice. All right. Let's see. Here's a good one. Kind of relevant. Carson Lavalie, what is it like to be in the cockpit of a monster truck? You, you could probably talk either before when they had suspension seats or versus now. Suspension seats. So um, it's, did yeah, you drive in a beer I did drive. I did one, my first ever time driving uh, and was in the field. Uh, they actually just finished up our first three seat style monster truck. And it actually was a, it was the nitro circus truck at the time it was going to be. Um, but I had no idea just at the shop hanging out like normal. And uh, dad had told me he wanted me to pull the truck out of the shop and just park it around back to, you know, to tire it up. And it was the first time I drove like a competition truck. Um, with the rear steering and everything. I drove the ride trucks, but that's not, it's kind of a normal vehicle, just huge tires. Mm. So I pulled around back and did that. And then they started like, okay, we well, need to find a fire suit. You need to do this, need to do that. And I'm like, oh God. So I pulled out and went to the field and this thing has a, a beard suspension style seat, which sounds like it would be the right thing, but it's actually the absolute wrong thing yeah. for us. So this seat has bands, like huge rubber bands in it. And it feels super comfortable and everything like that. But when this seat compresses, your seat belts loosen. Your body is just basically in a in a somewhat of a confined area, loose. And um, it was super. It was it basically everybody had marks on the top of their helmet from the steering wheel. So it was pretty standard. It's basically what you look like sitting in a seat. Like <laughs> you're just sitting on a normal seat. But either way, Dad backs me up way far away from the ramp, farther than I should have been, and tells me, "Do not let out." Well, I take off and the, the batteries weren't fully charged on this truck. So uh, it held the ignition back from letting the motor go all the way up. So by the time I got to the ramp, I was way topped out. The truck jumps pretty far, pretty good. It was bigger than a race lane, but not quite a freestyle style jump. Nose is in, lands. I bite my tongue with every tooth in my, my head <laughs> and my neck. It felt like Gumby. Like I was just, I couldn't move. I was supposed to. I was supposed to go sighting in a rifle for the first time ever with a buddy of mine, just doing it as a, an experience. And I couldn't even bend my neck to, to look oh, wow. down the scope. And that was day one after that happened. I just did one jump and it was, it, it ruined me. But nowadays with the suspension styles, or the, the full containment aluminum seat, non-suspension seat, the suspension upgrades that we have now and the harnesses, we actually have kind of a mix of NASCAR fighter jet monster truck and, Whatever it's else, harness. Thing. We've helped yeah. de we've helped develop a lot of uh, a lot of other safety equipment in other sports because we crash all the time. Where most other sports, they crash one time and they throw all their equipment away. Well, we crash over and over and over again. So that uh, we've actually helped uh, a lot of the safety companies develop new new whether whether it's gear that you wear or uh, belts or seats or anything like that. So our seat belts actually have a ratcheting system on both sides. So it's a normal cinch tight on the lap on the, uh, the shoulder harnesses, but then both of our lap belts have a ratcheting system that you can tighten up tighter than you want. Like it's oh, yeah. insanely tight, but if you're not so tight that you're having a hard time breathing, to be honest, it's not tight enough. And yeah. the trucks. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, uh, but in doing so with all those upgrades, every upgrade gives you, you know, a, you know, a little bit more comfort to just give it the truck a little bit more. So everything is, is basically it all evolves around just upgrading the performance of the truck. And it has to do with your comfort, durability of the truck and everything. And it's all just to push the envelope even further, but it, no matter what, it doesn't matter how far advanced we are with all of our safety equipment, suspension and all these things. I know for a fact, if I don't drive my truck beyond its limits, and get out sore, I didn't do a good enough run. That is absolutely my telltale sign of whether I did it right or not. If I don't get out and the bump stops aren't blown out of the shocks, my back is hurting, I'm out of breath, the seatbelts are so tight I could barely get them undone, 
Now I know I didn't do a good enough run for the fans. I know that's you know that's that's how far I have I have to push myself and the truck beyond its limits every time because that's what everybody wants to see. Mm -hmm. But back to the question, what does it feel like inside of a truck? It's kind. I always jokingly say, but it's about, it's honestly about serious. It's kind of like falling down a flight of steps, but it's fun. I always say it. It's like riding a <laughs> roller coaster, and then the track just ends. Like you just <laughs> jump off of it. I mean, you live, but it just falls off. I actually, I did like I did two years in a suspension seat, and I think I'm permanently damaged for the rest of my life for sure. because of it. It's crazy. A dad actually broke his shoulder because of a, sus a suspension seat. He compressed oh, wow. down into the seat so far that he hit the tube framework of the seat, which is really far in there, with his shoulder. And uh, it was crazy. It was actually in a racing pass. And wow. he just hit just right where it compressed in and broke his shoulder. So it's um, those seats were as good as they do sound. Not for they, what we do. No, no. good. They're yeah. comfortable. Yeah, sound. not for us at least. I mean, they're, they're great for other sports, but – uh, the G-forces we're taking are just insane. I just thought it hurt so bad, and I didn't say a word. I got out. I was 19 years old. My eyes are bloodshot, <laughs> and I'm like just kind of looking around, wondering what's going on. I'm like, man, this is what it's like every time? I didn't say a word to nobody. Oh, and, man. And then the first time I jumped in an aluminum seat, I was scared to death. I accidentally jumped too high, and it landed, and I could still see where I was going. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> wow, that's cool. <laughs> you were sold right then yeah well then i had to sell dad on it then i had one before him yeah, it took years to get dad to do it and then even i got him to do a hans yeah i did the first year i ever wore a hans i wouldn't i was wearing a neck brace that was made for riding go-karts it was like this little teeny thing that wrapped around my neck and i swear to you dude i would just disappear out of screen <laughs> and i would jump it was hard it was horrid horrible yeah in cabs from back then were yeah you wouldn't even show them yeah they didn't want to they wouldn't show them it was like a murder scene <laughs> ragdoll and <laughs> oh man uh so in a show what uh what's your biggest breakage you've ever had he's had uh, the worst i've actually uh i actually totaled a grave digger one time yeah really? well, did. i did too i forgot about that did you yeah i don't remember it but it's <laughs> it's when i broke my neck oh yeah <laughs> Oh, that was during an encore, wasn't it? Yeah, during an encore. We and I actually drove that truck. Okay, that's fine. that's the truck I actually won my championship with. This is the one you broke your neck Oh, in. yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah really? so he – yeah. Because I totaled mine uh, in 2016. I was going for a backflip and under-rotated it. Uh, it's when we were first kind of learning stuff, the ramps and all that. And I think it was – they were building all the ramps out of just dirt. So they would change from one truck to the next. That was before they had the containers in them or, or those uh, trench boxes or any of that stuff. And I hit it pretty good. It was just this weird hit. And it twisted the chassis so bad that they actually – we did rebuild my truck. It was Grave Digger number 32. And we actually had to mount the motor sideways, a little bit crooked in it, and move the transfer case in it to line everything back up. And they completely redid the entire front half of the truck. Everything that I was in, they encapsulated in, I was okay. That stuff was kind of okay, but it twisted the entire – I mean, just ungodly. Yeah, it was crazy. The pictures, it honestly looked like it was distorted. Like the, the photo was distorted because the, the truck was that. so far down. It was it was every bit of probably eight to ten inches down in the wow. one front corner. And and really, and honestly, his his height wasn't insane. Like he's no. saying, it was when we were we're, we're still trying to, to dial in the, the backflip ramp. And we really didn't dial the backflip ramps in until, honestly, like, maybe a year it's been a year now the trench box that we have now is basically just two big humongous steel plates and it's it's 100 the best thing ever you know how it's going to jump no matter what it's awesome and it stays consistent too right yeah yeah that's that's his chassis after he got done with it here i'll uh let me let me go full screen for you there oh there you go kind of hard to see it oh now wow. you can see it like that yeah oh gosh yeah. Well, i don't know where the camera's at <laughs> oh yeah. wow yeah, all that stuff should look straight. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh I mean we fixed it. <laughs> that's so that's after then? That was after. That was everything that we still could use. But then even after that, a lot of the bars in the rear of it here were actually uh were broken and we didn't see that until later on. So it actually uh we basically that's the first time that uh that a grave digger had never made it to the next event. 
Oh, wow. And we, what I did is I actually, so Ryan was talking about when he broke his neck and he did a flip and landed on the cage and it smashed, basically he pancaked the entire truck front to back almost. So mm -hmm. they completely redid, you know, the whole top half of the truck. And I actually, that grave digger truck happened to be off that weekend from doing an event. And I got in that truck that I had never drove and finished and won my championship. I won a racing and freestyle in it because they yeah, double down in it. It was yeah, awesome. Well, people always talk smack saying they were cheating because we do all this extra stuff to our trucks and this and that. I'm like, whatever. I don't, if that's what you think. So it was almost perfect that I had a truck that I'd never been in. It was actually mine was grave digger 32. One of the newest grave diggers on the fleet where that one's grave digger number 23, the oldest one on the fleet. And I actually whooped everybody's butt that weekend and racing and freestyle. So that was awesome. Nice. Nice. Very cool. Uh, here's one. Uh, speaking of anniversaries, Gravedigger 40th anniversary. You guys think you'll do anything special, any kind of livery or anything for that? Scared to death. <laughs> I um, Instantly what pops in my head is the Encore, just because we had so much. It was the best time in a monster truck I've yeah. ever had in my life was the Gravedigger 35th anniversary. And it was just, it was just unreal. So, cool. so a lot of times when these these anniversary or these encores are planned and this and that, and they try to get too deep into it, they try to make it too choreographed, and you don't. That's not what it's about. At least yeah. that's not what Team Gravedigger is about. That's what I told him. I said, so no, th this is how it's going to go down. This is how I picture. We can go out there and we make, make sure we get everybody on the track and all that stuff. But it's just a no holds bar from start to finish. You, we trucks basically the easiest way to do it is do a not necessarily a train and follow each other, but so everybody's out of each other's way and we just go until the trucks won't go anymore and continue on. Uh, and, and it always makes out for the best. If you try to plan it and choreograph stuff, that's the worst part of it because you're so nervous that you're not going to make your part. You're not going to do what you're supposed to do. You're not going to make your move. And um, so just doing that, that was, uh, it was one of the coolest ones yeah. that i've ever even to watch it on video it's so awesome yeah it was insane we had eight trucks i think on the floor at one time and me adam and Kristen pulled out Kristen did her first ever backflip yeah uh Kristen did a, uh, adam did a backflip i almost didn't did make a, one yeah. because the container moved. <laughs> it was awesome i hit yeah. the container if you watch the video and i'm like oh my gosh when I, <laughs> as soon as i hit it the whole container moved. thank god I actually landed on the wheel then Kristen That's nails cool. hers i nailed mine and as soon as we land all the other trucks come barreling out either side of Thunder Alley and, and uh, actually Las Vegas style. So we all get out there on the floor and we kind of we, we planned it a little bit where basically we just wanted to make sure that we were all going the same direction on the track. So we lined up all the way across and we were actually we had to get too deep because we were so fanned out so huge. And we took off and Kristen had never been in a stadium set in, setting before for freestyle. So she like, you know, she's lined up for. The <laughs> biggest stuff of the year of the like ever her life. Yeah. Her monster truck career, the biggest jump she's ever seen in her life. And she's got to jump it first thing. First thing with <laughs> seven other trucks, like tire to tire beside her. So we threw her to the wolves to the max for sure. We jump the first row, second row, we hit it. And Kristen stays in her line basically. And the second row of jumps for her, which was, it was, there's only two rows at that, that particular track. Her line was the steepest by far. Mm -hmm. And she, like, we already kind of told her, like, look, for these big jumps, you got to commit. You got to go for it. Well, we kind of didn't say, like, well, if it's really steep, you don't really want to commit. Well, she committed. Yeah. Skies it through the air just 90 degrees. It actually tilted a little bit, so it saved her from just a straight chassis hit. But yeah. tumbles over. First thing, she crashes out. Carl Van Horn breaks a wheel off first jump, and we just keep going until they all fade away. And my favorite part that I'll never forget about that, I was driving my dad's truck. Dad was injured. It was the, the year that he got injured. So he mm -hmm. was on the sidelines watching all this. Basically, we were giving him the ultimate throwdown freestyle for his anniversary. And I was in his truck, never drove it before until I got in it to drive out on that floor. Had no idea about how it landed, any of that stuff. But I knew for a fact I was not going to hold back no matter what was going down. And I ended up whipping around and being in front. We kind of got it until a point where we were all in a train. And it was Adam, Tyler, uh, I think Randy Brown. Yeah, Randy Brown and uh, Chucky was still – they were still going. And I was in front of all of them. And I got so excited, like I could barely contain myself, like jittery, like because I wanted to jump higher just to make them do it too. So I hit the jump way faster than I should have. It was freaking awesome. Aired it out. And all these guys, all I could think about in the air was how they were looking at me do that. 
while I was, you know, they were all jumping behind me, landed the body shocks off. It was just insane. And we all kind of crashed at the perfect same time. The only person that the didn't, motor up. yeah, only person didn't crash was him because he blew the motor up, sucked it full of mud. Yeah, I was doing donuts in the in the mud hole up there. <laughs> it was it was amazing. Like my I truck landed. That, that was the worst landing great bigger I've been in my life. Yeah, that was hilarious. It was horrible. <laughs> I expected my truck to land like crap, and it was the best landing truck. I've no, ever it's been be, in. I because I His killed myself. Terrible. I killed myself in Dad's truck to make it land good because he didn't want to. <laughs> Yeah, we, we got to the point at the end of dad's monster truck career. I would he tune went, the shocks yeah, one. He wouldn't tune his shocks. He wanted Adam to do it or me to do it. Whoever, somebody besides him because he's like, I don't want to climb up in that thing. Just get it right for me. So, yeah, we had to sacrifice our backs to make sure he was good. Nice, nice. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. Um, let's talk about mega trucks a little bit. So both of you guys started in mega trucks, right? Yep. All yeah. Right. So I actually, I, I gotta, I gotta show. I haven't, haven't even showed like the public this thing yet. So oh yeah, my movies. first truck ever was a Suzuki Samurai, and for Christmas one year, Adam was 15, uh, because he was about to get his license. So Adam got his vehicle that he was going to be driving for this Christmas, and he got a Suburban with a big 454 big block in it, lifted up solid axle swapped with 44 inch super swampers. Like this thing was ridiculously awesome, and I, I knew about it. But I had no idea that dad took my Suzuki Samurai and remade it into the first thing ever called Son of a Digger. <laughs> yeah, this is identical to what it looked like. Seriously, like right. the, the little steel wheels, little chrome steel wheels, just like this, the little narrow uh, super swampers on it. It was blacked out, Son of a Digger on the side. And it wasn't even the same Son of a Digger logo I have now. It was the original. A little bit of flames on the front. My dad hand painted this thing back in the day. It was terrible. It was it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I was hot stuff. Had a side pipe on it. It was a manual. And my dad put a Weber carburetors. If you're if you're familiar with with carburetors at all, Weber is like the the most well known carburetor for um, Volkswagen engines, and they work really good for Samurais too. So I had a Weber carburetor. So I thought it was hot stuff. It would do a second gear burnout in the grass, you know, which is super easy to do now. But I thought it was awesome. But I mud raced it. I went to Bodacious Virginia Mud Bog, which was one of the first places my dad actually ever went to. Uh, it's about two and a half hours from us, and there's pictures of my dad in the early '80s with the uh, the red primer grave digger at Bodacious, and then that is the first place I ever competed at with my truck, the little Samurai, and it was hilarious because I actually got stuck on the starting line. Um, yeah. I pulled up and I was done. I couldn't even. The guy waved the, the flag. So deep. Yeah, a guy waved the flag, and I couldn't. I moved maybe a foot. So dad oh. told me, and I was at the age. I think I was twelve, yeah. something like that. I was at the age where I didn't. You know, I wasn't into breaking rules. Like it was a rule for a reason. And the drivers meeting and said, you know, get lined up, and then we'll tell you when to go. And dad told me, he said, I don't care what they say. You back up to where I say to start, and you hold that thing wide open, and dump the clutch, and don't let out. Well, I'm like panicking because the, the official was there with the flag and stuff. And he's not, you know, like waving it green, but I do it anyway. Hold it wide open, dump the clutch, and I made it 103 foot. I thought it was the best thing in the world. It smoked the whole place out. There wasn't mosquito to be alive for miles <laughs> yeah. when I got done. But it was awesome. It was my first time ever competing in a mud bog, and it's what started kind of kind of started Son of a Digger as a competition truck. Um, and uh, so but I remade it into an RC. It's really cool. It's a chef queen. It's just <laughs> it's chef queen. It doesn't run, huh? Yeah, no, it runs. But, it it uh, runs. It won't run it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't run it. But uh <laughs> then then we got into you know the other mud truck stuff. That's my mud truck right there that I built. And it's all there's a whole crazy story behind that thing. So the the frame of that thing is the is the original gravedigger number six, which was the street truck. Uh and dad built it as a show truck back in the 80s, and it kind of just it just sat around and, and deteriorated after you know 20 years 10 15 years and um had a good motor in it and this and that so we uh well, we put a different motor in it actually but we spray bombed the thing black and started mud racing with it and adam crashed it at my birthday yeah. party so then <laughs> i stripped the body off and built my truck out of it and it was the you know the first willie's jeep that i had that was a uh, grave digger, or son of a digger and then that truck right there that's adam's bad company didn't run very much, but that thing was ridiculously awesome. 
It was. I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to uh, kind of how we describe. I wanted the worst handling and the most power you could have possible. <laughs> and so it was just leaf springs uh, on it. And uh, I ended up at this event right here. I actually blew the broke the little leaf springs in half on it. I think. Yeah, it's coming right um, here. But it actually has like the same motor, basically like what a king, like what King Sling or something has in it right there. And I just I built everything by myself with that thing. So I was nervous to really just let it rip every time. When yeah. I say everything, like I built the drive shafts by myself. <laughs> I built everything on it. And so I was a nervous wreck to like really romp on it. But it had two seats in it. That was actually Brandon Vincent was riding with me right then. Oh, wow. So did you – is it common that you have somebody sitting next to you in those races? No, not normally. Nobody – you're not really supposed to um, yeah. mo for the most we part. We kind of know the guy that owns that place. Yeah. <laughs> it's Dad's Park. <laughs> no, when Dad's Park, yeah. yeah. When but I have two, two, um, uh, two aluminum race seats in it um, at the time. And I think full, this might be the pass that you rip, basically rips the front it end It is, out. and then I end up four-linking it after this. And I, Not that I regret it. The guys from the metal shop, they, they came down. It was when they were first getting rolling, and they uh, – they actually uh, four linked the thing with me, and it was uh, it was a really cool project that we had together. Before they actually built their own uh, the the Saigon Shaker truck, they down there and they worked on that with me. Their uh, Ryan Dishroon was just a kid, man, and we had a blast building that thing together. Yeah, the front ends broke out of it right there, actually. <laughs> yeah, there you <laughs> go. The mud truck pass. I mean, you've got that little hole that's cutting the windshield. How do you see? You where can. You're going? Yeah, you kind of don't like. Honestly, the big the biggest thing with those is kind of knowing the track already. Uh, and and you, we use we try to best to use big landmarks to build the tracks. Like we use monster truck tires to basically, uh, you know, like guide you around. Um, and it's you kind of don't see, but majority of the time it's it's normally a straight line race uh, for mud racing. But we've kind of pushed as much as we can to make it an obstacle course all the time. And now the mega trucks are elevated so insanely. Like that was a super old video. Actually. Um, after that, Adam four linked his truck, ran it for a while. I four linked my truck, my truck in that video had maybe 950 horsepower. Um, and then I put a supercharger on it and making 14, 1500 horsepower. So that, and that was just stair stepping. And now even today it's, it's even crazier. Like my little brother, Weston took over my truck once I stopped mud racing. Mm -hmm. I had 14? 12. Oh, well, yeah, it was, was 12. 12. I used yeah. tiny, super tiny. The small, smallest racing seat I've ever they seen. They took the life. blower off and stuff, though. Yeah. We had put a naturally Yeah, we backed it down to, to about 900 horsepower, which is still insane yeah. for a 12-year-old. But I had all the suspension dialed in. Everything was good to go on it. He jumps in it and, and handled it like a man. It was awesome. Yeah. Then we upgraded. Uh, he, he ran that for a while. Now he is in a full-on tube chassis mega truck that is literally like easily comparable to one of our monsters. That's it right there, Hog Hog. Well, you have one yourself, yeah. There, Greg. <laughs> yeah, his his might be a little bit more expensive than yours, right? Yeah. Yeah. You have probably ten scale this, the uh, cost. <laughs> <laughs> but I, actually, I saw one guy. He built a uh, a full metal tube chassis version of your brother's mud truck. Just a Hog Hog. Yeah, the Bokog. I haven't seen that one I yet. I haven't seen that either. Yeah, I have to look around for that. Just to let everybody know, if anybody's on here listening or watching this, that we hunt you guys down that yeah. build stuff like that. Like, we're watching you. Yeah. So we're waiting because we can't build something like that. So if you've got something and you're going to throw it away, you better send it to us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right. So with the mega trucks, I mean, you're – how does that compare to like a monster truck? I mean, is it a pretty natural transition into getting to that? Yeah, I'd say it's probably the most comparable thing there is. And but there's there's some parts of the mega trucks that's that exceeds the monster trucks, like the horsepower to weight ratio. We're running majority of the time we're running basically the same motor, and sometimes we even pump the motor up even more. Monster Jam has rules and regulations on cubic inch, the amount of overdrive in the blower, so basically how much boost you can make. Uh, so it pretty much regulates you down to about anywhere from 12 to 1400 horsepower, just depending on the motor and the different parts and pieces you use <coughs> for, if you're really pushing it and making an unreliable motor with those rules and regulations, you can maybe make 1600 horsepower, the mega truck stuff. There's no rules and regulations. Basically it's, we have for our park in particular, we have safety rules and regulations mm -hmm. and that's it. 
You can put as big of a motor as you want. You can you can spin the blower as fast as you want, make as much boost as you want, as much nitrous as you want, all the fuel additives, anything you want to do. So we're, there's mega trucks making 2,000 horsepower easily. But the biggest thing about that all is that, you know, like even Teeny's mud truck is making 15, 1600 horsepower, which is a lot when the truck is less than half the weight of yeah. a monster truck. Our monster trucks now weigh 12,000 pounds. And these mega trucks are 5,500 to 7,000 pounds fully dressed, ready to go. So the <coughs> weight to power ratio is insane. And yeah. there's like my truck was, um, wouldn't, doesn't necessarily fully classify as a mega truck because the axle size a mega truck to us it has to be a two and a half ton uh rated axle or bigger or large yeah so my truck was uh like a ton and a quarter one ton style uh axle so it was a little bit lighter but my truck my truck was 3800 pounds with 1500 horsepower i swear it was the acceleration of that is unmatched by anything I've ever driven in my life. Like it was insane. I it skimmed was, it. It was, yeah, he skimmed. I skimmed his uh, truck like a it. nine foot deep yeah. water. I yeah. did. Yeah. Just like the, what is it called? What's the stuff? The in, uh, Formula Off-Road stuff Off from I Iceland. We, we had, uh, we had, he had two paddle tires of his own. We borrowed two more from my buddy and uh, we were at some place and they had a bounty hole and you made a thousand bucks to make it yeah. through. Whoever made it through the bounty hole would get a thousand bucks. And that joker, it was like a boat getting on a plane. It was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. When you watch the video, it's not that impressive. Until it is see, and isn't. Until you see the very next truck to go was a mega creeper with probably a 70 inch tall tire. And it disappeared like probably 12 feet in. Yeah. And the truck just goes like tires are gone. The tires. Wow. We're fully covered. And I was like, the truck was done, and we were the first ones. Yeah, he was the first one to go. I, I was, it was it was when I broke my neck, so I didn't I couldn't drive my truck, but we were going to go do these mud bogs anyway. So we made Adam drive it. It still had leaf springs. Though. We had no idea. Like we just lined up for this bounty hole, and they said, "Yeah, it's pretty bad." You know, and you know. it did look like it's like ah, whatever. You know, I mean, I didn't want it to. I didn't want to get stuck or get hung up or anything like that. But I was like, well, it's not too bad. Whatever. And then after I watched that truck go, I'm like, oh, my gosh. Yeah, it, the, my truck would have went all the way under. Yeah, it would have been gone, like, up to the windows. <laughs> and it well, made it. But for, as far as the differences go, it's – it's um, the durability of the monster truck is definitely way higher than the mega truck. Mega trucks are faster, uh, a little bit more nimble just because of the lightweight tire, lightweight chassis, and everything yeah, like that. It's more based – it's more favors the, the racing side of things for the mega truck stuff. And, like, Dad – where he's kind, he goes back and forth with it. He wants to race it. He wants to be competitive racing, but then he wants to be able to freestyle the truck too. So it's that's a tough balance in the mega truck world because some of the guys, most, the, I say, a ninety-eight percent of the the mega truck world is racing. It's not about the freestyle stuff. If the freestyle stuff, if they have some freestyle events, some of the other mud bogs and stuff like that, it's some of the big bog trucks or some of the trucks, and they're pretty tough, but they don't they don't have a whole bunch of power. So sometimes they'll break, but they're not really. But if you get like the full on race truck, they're not durable enough for the most part to, to take a beating. But like Teeny's truck is really tough, man. The, the new bog hog is, it's pretty tough. I've seen him do some stuff in it. That's pretty unbelievable. But it like, uh, whereas basically the monster trucks are built to crash those things. If you do crash, you gotta, you gotta start looking over some stuff because it, it's gonna, it's gonna fold some stuff up or mess some stuff up. Yeah. Yeah. So, as we we're kind of talking, so it's not the bad company. Now, I just built this not too long ago, so this is my my SMT10, and you guys got your your oh, right here, yeah. One of the I've got a couple. Of, so, uh, so we're gonna challenge for tell you. everybody what we're supposed to be doing here. What we were what we were supposed to do. The event was coming up. And at the world, yeah. the RC World Finals, we were having at, at the shop there, Digger's Dungeon, and we were going to announce it and do this whole big deal. And so we were going to have this. We're going to do like a speed run to have the. Basically, I want to try to build the world's fastest RC, like solid axle monster truck, and also potentially do the longest jump, or at least have a jump off between. We're going to have a friendly competition between myself, Ryan, Weston, and you. And if other people's wanted to partake, then so be it. But uh, you've basically built yours. Ours are still brand new in the box because we knew if we took these things out, they would have looked like this one right here. <laughs> yeah, so I I built mine. I had like three kits that I built like in the middle of winter. So I didn't plan for quarantine well because I already got like, <laughs> built on the way by the time this happened. So I built this one. You guys 
pretty much have every like I I think we kind of said okay you can have aluminum links, um, you know put it's, whatever power system you want in it. So um, and then we got the the dirt tracks munition tires in there. So I uh, I think what we can do at least remotely is uh, do a little speed run competition once you guys get them built. Okay. And then we'll open it up to everyone else. We'll get a few prizes out there just for fun uh, for some other people. But uh, this one currently, so this is in there, but I, you know, full disclosure, I have not run it yet because it's got <laughs> the, the Arma 6S power system in there. <laughs> the chance if I throw a 6S in here, it's just going to like, just it, it's going to shoot it to the moon. So I fly it like my Typhon or something. So um put whatever power system you want in it and uh yeah we've so we've got like gps meters i think we each got like a couple of the dynamite ones so yeah we'll on there and uh yeah see what we can do for I'll, speed I'll, what i'll do is i'll strap my phone to it and do a live feed <laughs> <laughs> and for speedometer i put the gps turn the gps on and then i'll wreck going 70 miles an hour in my neighborhood into a mailbox and blow my phone apart. Do you have, have you seen of anybody doing a speed run with the SMT 10 yet? And like have any idea of like, what's what the fastest one yet? How about if we do that? Let's see. Not, I'm not telling people to go out there right now and, and try to set this record. I guess you could, but if you have old footage or maybe an old truck that you built to build the fastest SMT 10, I, I want to see it. I'd like to see, cause I want to make yeah. mine faster. Yeah. I want to know what you did so I can do the next thing. And I mean, maybe one caveat to that is we should have it where it's got to be fastest, not on pavement. So you just got to run it on dirt of some sort. Because if you run it on pavement, it's it's too smooth. Yeah, yeah, be, yeah. You know, it's, and it's got to have a V tread tire. There, yeah, we can't have like some you know foam tires or anything like that. It's got to be on a V tread you're, of your choice, as long as it's a monster truck pattern tire. I'll, I'm making that rule right now. Yep, yep. So it's got to be off road, no pavement. V tread pattern, and then uh, yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll start start posting it up, and we'll share them on Axial and and get a, a friendly competition going. So I could yeah. have gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, start start charging your your screwdriver there. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we'll have some fun with it. Uh, body choice will be interesting because depending on what body you choose, will depend how much air you get underneath there. So. Gotta go interesting. So I, I think I'm settled on bad company will be mine. So I like it. I love it. Yeah, I love it. I do. I hate to admit <laughs> it. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. You guys got time for a few more questions? Bring it on, yeah, dude. Man. All right. Oh, here's one. Adam, you want to bring back Taz? Bring back Taz. I wish if Warner Brothers would let me. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, actually, I think we got a video. Let's wait. We'll get that lined up here. I've got a pretty funny story to tell about that too. Once we watch the video, so I told the the people that were in charge of the body shop at the time or any of that stuff. I just told them, "Yeah, we got the body fixed for this much." I'm like, "Oh, that's not too bad." And I didn't tell them it wasn't painted. <laughs> we painted the whole thing with spray can. Nice, awesome, nice. super. So proud. the other thing I want to walk through is the uh, the burn yard that you did uh, not too long ago, Ryan. So. Let's bring that, I'll bring that video up here. Um, but yeah, talk us through kind of how how that came about. And then one thing I wanted to point out here, so you'll see there's some RC car footage in here. Yes, where, so I, just to go ahead and get on that, is I there it is right threw there. out <laughs> my Creighton 8S, brand <laughs> new one. First sacrifice, just in case. <laughs> Which it, it made it. it. It made it. I did land on it a little bit, but it made it. It's pretty tough. So, yeah, I sacrificed my Creighton 8S to uh, run around with GoPros all attached to it. And a lot of the GoPro footage you see of up close and personal is off that, uh, the Creighton. So, pretty cool. But the whole Hoonigan thing came about years ago when Hoonigan first released a video saying that they were going to become a thing. Um, and they were kind of trying to get across the point of Hoonigan, which means driving a vehicle in a crazy manner but under control uh so they used a ton of different internet videos drifting off-road trucks and one of the videos that happened to be in there was my first backflip video from my encore release of son of a digger at monster jam world finals so i thought it was cool and messaged them said hey that was me in the in the video doing a backflip and ever since then we've been 
really good friends. And basically I haven't bought a t-shirt in probably 10 years. <laughs> so they, uh, we've, I've wanted to do something with them for years and, and working with them and uh, scheduling with me, all the things that we had to go through, all the loopholes we had to jump through. It took quite a few years for <clears throat> years for it to come around. And we finally got it. They got a place big enough to handle a monster truck and I was in the area. So I made sure it happened. And this is the result. It was the coolest, most fun thing I've, I've ever done outside of the monster jam arena. It was so, awesome. and the, the best thing was, is those guys didn't know what to expect. Cause I actually drag raced as well the same day, which is on a different video on the drag strip. And these guys were thinking all oh, this big thing is going to be slow blah 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 and it was absolutely insane like it was so fast it honestly surprised me i'm not gonna lie uh and I, it tore the rubber up off of the drag strips so i'm pretty sure the drag strip wasn't too happy about that but then we went straight over to do this at the burn yard and it was just awesome man it was so much fun and like i said these guys were blown away by what the truck could do like just burn out burnout wise it was yeah. insane for them and then uh, later on we actually put a a, a concrete barrier out there on the on the floor on its side and i did uh, a popper i did a bicycle uh, a couple other tricks out there a slap wheelie and things like that which the burn yard looks very big in those videos it's super small it's uh, amazed what you were able to do in that area with that truck that was it's telling you like even these videos make it look bigger than what it really is it's it's not very big area so it was uh it was I was honestly a little bit worried about it, but I didn't tell anybody or make it show. I was like, That's fine. It's plenty of room. It's plenty of room. And it uh, luckily it ended up being plenty of room and I was able to whip the truck around and, and make it look good. But it was definitely, it was so awesome, man. So much fun. And my, my biggest thing is even as, as soon as we got done with the last interview, my next thought was instantly, what are we going to do next? Like when's the next time we're going to do this, how are we going to integrate it in something else, do something crazier, you know, I'm looking at the containers there like, hey, we jump these pretty normally. So uh, I'm ready to go burn the burn yard up again. There's no doubt about that. Nice. Yeah, for sure. Let's see. We got uh, Jesse Lee Pinniger. My kids, Marcus, Gavin, Vivian are watching. Love you guys. They say hello from Alberta, Canada. Gavin asks, how many trophies do you guys have? I actually, this is horrible to say, but I actually opened a sea container today. Did you see how? Many yeah, I did too. Yeah, I did too. I, I, I don't know it. what to do with them. Yeah, we've, we've got so many, and like the one thing is, is dads. Dads are insane. He has the entire digger's dungeon. If there is an empty space whatsoever, a trophy's there. And there's, I mean, he's got trophies from his mud racing career back in the early '80s, and they're they're in our beach house. They're in his house, the dungeon, the shop. Uh, all the shops and we've, we've got three main shops and then two kind of outpost shops and every one of them's got dad's trophies in it. Uh, and I think he's got a storage unit full of them too. I've got a, a trophy uh, quote trophy room. It's not done yet, but it is complete. The floor is completely full of trophies. He, we just found a container that had two pallets of trophies of his. Yeah. I, I, Cause I had them all somewhere in the shop and then we're cleaning up and I put them on pallets and I honestly just opened it up and I forgot Yeah, and because I have them. They're in my house. They're in my attic. There was some out here. I don't <laughs> even know what I did with them. There's up in the loft maybe. And I, they're so, it's just, and they're big. Yeah. A lot of them are big. So, um, and, and for a while there, Monster Jam was given a trophy for every single event. Now you just get the trophy if you win the overall event champion. So it's like if I won, you know, even at arenas, they were given like if you won wheelies, donuts, uh, freestyle, racing, whatever, you got a trophy for every single thing. And it was like I remember going, they would give plaques out for some of those. I have enough plaques that I, I could have actually probably sided my house. <laughs> oh, wow. Unreal. Yeah, it's a crazy amount. I I have I uh, take it for granted. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's one thing is I I definitely seen dad do it and I see him do it a little bit. So I think I feel like I'm the least like bad at it. I don't know how you'd explain it, but I cherish my trophies for sure and uh I'm glad, you know, I'm glad I do because you you know you never know what tomorrow what you know brings tomorrow. And you know, you it's even like now like he was just saying Monster Jam used to give away so many trophies that, you know, for us it was 
you got one for racing, one for donuts, one for wheelies, one for freestyle, and all this thing, all this stuff. So we kind of took it for granted then, for sure. But now you only get one, and it's not easy because you got to yeah. do good at everything. I mean, you can go out there and kill it in racing, and still not get that trophy. You can do the best two wheel skills in the world, still not get that trophy, and the best freestyle in the world not get that trophy. So now it's you know more so than ever that you cherish those things. But uh, to me, I'm you know I'm the single guy with uh, you know the house, so I can still bachelor pad it. So. I have trophies in every room of my house. My living room has my world uh, finals trophies in it, along with other trophies. I, I have them propped up in my windowsill, and I kind of didn't realize it. My uh, my neighbor, older guy, he's and he's uh, he has back issues. So I went and mowed his grass the other day for him, and I looked over, and there was multiple rooms and windows in my house that had trophies lined in them that were like shining right in, on him. I'm like, God, that kind of looks arrogant there. So I went <laughs> a couple down, but yeah, they're everywhere. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, um, I couldn't even tell you how many hundreds. Uh, we had one person, Jeremy said that uh, he had a SMT 10 to 37 miles an hour on 2.6 inch tires. So 2.6 is yeah. That's, that's starting. Pretty, yeah. That's pretty good. That's fast. And yeah. it doesn't sound yeah. Fat, but that's fast. That's that's getting it pretty good. Yeah, because I mean, that all once you get up to that speed, it, the front end's gonna want to come up. So yeah, we we need to put the speedometer on our stuff as it sits. Dude, I'm telling you, the one I took the motor. I had a motor in this one that I had to get rid of because on 3s, <laughs> like it was I was embarrassing. I couldn't even play with my friends. It was hilarious. So we we love the uh, the Penda series style racing, just straight, straight line, line drag, and it, you like you take off right behind a roller and. The epitome of a perfect run is you get that roller and just and it rides it. the wheelie, but you can hold it. Oh. You just pin it and hold it, and it just rides it out, and then it goes right into the next jump. Yes, yeah, so it's we yeah. we'll run hundred like hundreds of passes, multiple battery packs, and chase for that one good pass. But my favorite is when he had this thing had this crazy motor in it. We're underneath the the lean to of his shop. We had this little track that was supposed to be the area where he parks his very nice like basically show truck. But obviously, we make an RC track anyway. And he takes off, and I'm slow mo videoing like every pass just in case we get that one. And he takes off wide open with another truck beside him. And his truck just darts off at Mach 1 and rails the pole, just demolishing it. Like it's <laughs> yeah, like, wide. It was man. hilarious. This, this truck always, it's like, it's, this one's kind of like our Gravedigger number seven. It like, is. It's, it's the terrible. short wheelbase, and it never comes back in the shop without four link bars hanging. Yeah. Nice. I just upgraded everything on it. And it's still not any better. I still break it. We're on it. We had the one sand dune back out there, and it was like it had to have been like 50, 60 foot tall at the top of it. And I just I was so mad one day because it was so fast. And you could it wasn't even fun to drive. It was so fast. It was swelling all the tires up, and I just jumped it right off of it. Like jumped a twelve foot tall jump that went down over a fifty foot ledge, and it's probably the only time it didn't break. <laughs> nice, nice. So. Here's a, one last question that we'll kind of wrap up. So uh, are you guys going to bring back Grave Digger the Legend? Um, I can't say I can't say no for sure. I, I think if we did anything, it would be for some uh, some special events, such as like anniversary stuff or uh, as far as running as a full time thing. I would like to. But I honestly, I took over for dad's spot, basically. So, I, you know, it's like that's. That's where I'm at right now, you know, and that, and I don't regret it one bit. I love driving the legend truck and kind of, you know, campaigning that thing. But um, if I'm going to tear a truck up, it might as well be the black and green wrecking machine. I do. Do you have an RC Grave Digger, the legend? I know you got the, the original. Well, that, I mean, that was, yeah. I don't have, I don't have it on monster tires, but that one, that's, I can swap her back and forth. Yeah. That's kind of a show or goer. I brought her out one day for a big show out. We had, big race before this quarantine went on so um yeah we'll do we'll do a uh like drag races you know and, and dad comes over he's got his his axial here that he makes us as smtt smt 10 he makes us take care of and he comes here expecting the batteries to be charged <laughs> ready to go everything like that and then he and he shows up and wants to drag race everybody and wants to he wants to be the one saying on your market set go so that he knows when to pull the trigger actually our, my my father-in-law made us uh he made us some lights actually. yeah yeah yeah, his father-in-law did a full-on light system because we were having so many red lights. We actually – so I've got a trick. If anybody else has the same issue of the red light kings, like my dad and the kids, they they red light so bad all the time. They anticipate the go. So you can't – On your mark, get set. You can't do the build-up because they're, they're gone. So I do it on the pop. So I get like a stick and I whack it against something. I make them look at the cars. Look at it. When you hear the noise, 
Yeah. Yeah. Don't look. Don't look at me. Don't look at me because if they see your arm move, they take off. Yeah. So yeah. I make them look away, look at your cars, and I whack it against something, and the, the pop is the, the sign to go. Well, Bob, Adam's father-in-law, seen us doing that. Thought it was hilarious and rigged up a, a, a legit red and green light like the monster trucks use, like we use at Monster Jam. It's pretty cool because he's actually a tech official at Monster yeah, Jam. Yeah, he helped develop the ones that we have at the shows. So. Yeah, so it was oh. he's legit. I mean, he built the real deal, just a small version. He got the light off of Am- the lights off of Amazon, a couple other things. We'll have to get him to do a little build yeah. breakdown because – it's awesome for the kids. Like our kids love imitating stuff. Like they even do, they do the pit party. Like that oh, day yeah. we were doing this big build up and we had, we basically we're setting dad up because we got everybody's truck ready just to beat dad was the whole goal. And dad <laughs> shows up and we had to get, it was, you know, per the kids uh, demands. We had to bring every truck out and put them around the track for the pit party. And then we, I've got this little speaker, like a little uh, Bluetooth speaker with a microphone. So we had to interview everybody about their trucks then we do the racing and we went through, you know, we, we kind of, we were going to do a bracket and then it just went, it was crazy. Basically anybody's truck that was charged and not broke. You lined up and called somebody out. Yeah. And, uh, it, but it was, a, it was Straight a freaking blast. Race. Yeah. It's, it's so much then fun. Then it just turned into a rogue freestyle. Yeah. Everybody is so, this sore losers just get, oh man, my, my boy races the sorest of sore losers. My dad's probably second sorest loser. Wade. Wade's probably third sorest loser. And the rest of us, we're kind of, it's, you know, we're having fun with it. We get in, we get into it really bad. One of the funniest things about basically all of us is when we're running the trucks, we can't help but like actually do like, oh, like it's oh, we're trying so hard. My dad is the worst. Like he'll be scuffing his feet around the ground, like oh, just trying to get more, trying to save it or oh, get it. Oh, he's going harder. Yeah, his his youngest Luke is the worst. He's hilarious. He's he's like our like just natural born comedian. Like him just being normal will cracks you up. He's just funny. He's got the deepest little voice. He's the youngest one, but he's going to be the biggest. No doubt about it. But he holds the controller backwards. Yeah. Like, let me get this one, one right there. Takes the show. So he holds it this way. Isn't that it? Okay. Is that right? Or does he? Yeah, that's it. Is that it? Yeah, that's Yeah, because then he gets up on it like this. That's how he steers. Yeah, he holds it. You know, this is standard. Is right? yeah. 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 That's how he does. He does this way. And he's... I cannot. He cannot do it this way. Cannot. We can't do it this way. I I don't know if anybody else does this in the world, but it is just weird. But yeah. the best part is, is he cannot stand himself when it hits wide open throttle. He it looks like he gets hit by a taser. Yeah, he's seriously. He's like going crazy, <laughs> and he uh, he actually had a broken leg, and he was yeah. in a wheelchair because he had a cast all the way to his hip. And yeah. in the wheelchair, I posted some videos of it oh, one time. We all did. It was I, like his little legs would go straight out. And he was. Just on the wheelchair, just going for it. I mean, I, I, he's probably about to break the trigger off. Honestly, like it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's the funny. funniest ever, and it, it's really funny to watch him do it, just because he's a cute little kid. But then to see Dad do it, it's yeah. like, oh man, we crack. We don't say anything to him. We're just all like laughing off to the side. And he's like, feet are scuffing to the ground, and he's going crazy trying to win, trying to beat up on a four year old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the the guys are getting good at, uh, or the boys are getting good at doing their their pit party conversations and thinking their sponsors and stuff. Oh like yeah. That. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. They, they love it. They get all into it. Like they get, they get a little shy. up. Will, but- they, Wade, he's really good at it. My oldest one, he's seven, but he absolutely will not do it in front of a camera. You got to sneak up on them and try to get them or whatever, but he knows like, and he'll say it. Like if I say it to him one time, he'll know he, who everybody he has to say for a sponsorship thing. He sings in the house. We got that table we built for the little, uh, one thirty second or the one yeah, sixty four scale. scale trucks, and uh, and he'll sing the national anthem, and they'll like do intros and all that stuff because he was getting mad like he didn't want he didn't want Ryan to even come over to see us doing intros. It's just enough like with the RC like stuff. He like we as I'm like dude, well we need more people here so we can do more trucks and intros. Nobody cares. We all will do it with you, buddy. Yeah, it's yeah, funny. that's awesome. Well, we can uh, we can wrap up. Really appreciate you guys taking the time and uh, you know showing us your shop and and talking through it. And uh, yeah, I mean, once we figure out the the RC event down there by you guys, we'll we'll definitely we'll get our speed run trucks out and, and do a long jump and 
you know, do some racing and, and have well, some. Stuff. Well, since we have your approval, I guess we'll start a build on them and we'll start challenging uh, the yeah. uh, yeah. special distancing speed challenge. Yeah. And then we'll just have to park them after. <laughs> That's the thing is you need to come take the receivers or something. Just take the whole car so we don't keep playing with them. That'll be the problem if it runs. Yeah. That that's the beauty of a hobby grade truck. You can always fix it. So, yeah, uh, I know it. Yeah. <laughs> that's my life. This is this is me. Yeah, he's he's the like the You're crew chief of the year for sure on our season. I'll right stay now. out here like the I'll put the kids to sleep. My wife, she's a paramedic, thanks to her for what she's doing right now out in the world. But uh at, at night. When I put those kids down, I fix about 10 to 15 RC trucks a night. And I'm just like, <laughs> and here, just like, I can't even get over it. Yeah. I'll come right. here, like, we'll tear our stuff up and leave for the night. And the next day, I come back preparing to, like, you know, fix everything. And he's already got it all fixed up. It's ready to go. Couldn't sleep, just went out there. Yeah. Had to. Can't wait for the next race. <laughs> Okay, so Adam, what I'll do is next time we, we bring the Horizon truck down, we'll just load it up with all of our broke vehicles. I, I'm telling you, dude. I'm, he loves it. I mean, I, I don't know why I've, I've really like to enjoy. I've really enjoyed it. If you want to just take all your trucks and run them over with a lawnmower and then dump them in my garage floor, I'll fix them up for you. <laughs> right, nice. Well, thanks again, you guys. Really appreciate it. Um, we'll get that that contest up. We'll give you guys a little bit of time to, to build your trucks first. So, you know, Adam, probably tomorrow this time. Yeah. Yeah, should be good. <laughs> But uh, yeah, we'll we'll get something fun going there. Definitely looking forward to all the the content you guys are get getting out there. And uh, you know, once you get back in your normal trucks, you know, we're we're looking forward to seeing you guys out doing shows again and stuff. So, um, but yeah, thanks again, and uh, we'll we'll talk to you soon. For those, we'll put a, a comment in there as well. But we'll we'll put you guys Instagrams, uh, your YouTube videos. So we'll we'll be looking forward to the RC jump. YouTube video that that thing's pretty awesome. And if you make an extra one, you want to send it here, you know, just let me know. I'll get you <laughs> Heck yeah. Yeah. I want to say something, man. I want to thank everybody during this crazy time. It's, it's, it sucks. It sucks for everybody, but I've been getting tagged in so many different RC builds, yeah. jumps, tricks, all these things. I did the born team challenge where I was trying to just, it wasn't about any one direct thing. I just wanted to convince or, or provoke everybody to do something fun within the confines of their quarantine. And I swear 90% of it was, was RC. Yeah, it was like the RC right, people. Was. And, you know, we did a lot of RC stuff. We jumped to Adam's house with an RC. Uh, we did all kinds of stuff. So I just want to say thanks for everybody tagging me in those th pictures. If, if my page or Adam's page likes it, or comments on it. It is us. We don't let anybody else run our yeah, stuff. Yeah, that's us. So I can't. We please. can't spell. We don't yeah. know the right punctuation. Yeah. Don't uh, hesitate. My, to I have a me. wife. She fixes mine. <laughs> I don't. So mine stays like that. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, though, anytime you guys do a build or have a question, like I, honestly, that's probably the biggest responses I ever give is when somebody asks me what RC car to get. Yeah. I love to try to help people get in the right direction because if you know. The hobby grade RC stuff is, if you're not involved with it, you need you need a little a uh, bit of a guidance in the beginning. And I love to give people that guidance, no matter what the the you know case may be, what they're looking for. So tag me, comment, talk to me, ask me questions. Never hesitate to let us know what you're doing. Show us what cool things you've done, or ask us questions because not only do we have a really cool job, we are ate up with RCs. We love RC vehicles in every different type airplanes boats all of it we're not the best of the airplanes mine is actually demolished i'm pretty over there good. right now i'm pretty good but the boats <laughs> getting we're kind of getting figured out but the rc trucks especially the smt10s we basically know yeah, them i just, the i want to thank axial and horizon for uh supplying us with uh, our our addiction yeah um and uh and it continues on and uh i i love being able to share that with my family uh because of uh, of you guys doing that and helping us out and uh, and Team Gravedigger being a part of that and being a part of Monster Jam with Axial, it's uh, I, I couldn't ask for anything better. I don't think. Yeah, it's definitely you know anybody listening, I'm sure, is into RCs whatsoever. That is seriously probably the best part about hobby grade RC or any RC is the ability to do it with your family, and it's it's something that there's there is a price range for everyone. Now you can go crazy or you can keep it very budget friendly and. You know, the best thing is, is the entire family can do it and the entire family will enjoy it. Yeah. I mean, it's that experience because, I mean, you guys remember, you know, growing up and doing RCs and 
you know, you remember that family. Now you're doing that with your kids and they're, they're going to kind of remember the same way. I mean, I grew up in the eighties and, you know, started doing RC with my, my family, my dad, brother, uncles, and then, you know, got in, back into it. And, uh, you know, now I've got a six-year-old daughter and I've, I've even got her convinced, you know, usually Barbies kind of trump RCs, but every once in a while she'll be like, can we take the RC car out? And I'm convinced once I can fit, once I set up like an interior to get a Barbie in there. Oh yeah. You're just going to cut her in half. It's no big deal, dad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just do it after <laughs> bedtime. <laughs> So, all right. Well, thanks a lot, guys. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, yeah, we'll keep posting more. And anytime you guys are, are posting RC stuff, we're always sharing it and, you know, sharing the hobby with everyone. So thanks a lot. Thanks, awesome. Guys. Thank you, guys. See you next time.